My name is Stephen Learson, and I'm a pianist and songwriter from Boston, Massachusetts. Since I was little, the Beatles were a band that played constantly in my house. They're definitely one of my biggest influences, and recently I've been taking a closer look at their music. The Beatles were a band that had it all. Thoughtful lyrics, beautiful melodies, and experimentation with different sounds. I love making new sounds, and for years I've been collecting synthesizers and other strange instruments. So I've decided to record some of my favorite Beatles songs using the different instruments in my studio and see what I can learn. The Beatles song I'll be highlighting today is Eleanor Rigby, which has its own unique sound. It was first released August 5th, 1966 on their seventh studio album, Revolver. This was accompanied by its release as a single, the B-side being Yellow Submarine. Eleanor Rigby was a sonic departure from the band's guitar-driven songs. In fact, there's no guitars at all. The arrangement consists of a double string quartet arranged by George Martin, and vocals from Paul, John, and George. After its release, it spent four weeks at number one on the British charts, but only made it to 11 in America. Yellow Submarine actually reached number two. Paul McCartney also won the 1966 Grammy for Best Contemporary Vocal Performance, and Eleanor Rigby is ranked 138 on Rolling Stone's list of the 500 greatest songs of all time. When I had the idea for recording Eleanor Rigby, I listened to every cover version I could find. And there's a lot. Here are some of my favorites. So when I was thinking of covering some Beatles tunes, I asked some of my friends online what they thought, and the response was not too encouraging. One thing is for sure, the Beatles evoke strong emotions in people. I realized I had to change the key because I can't hit those high notes like Sir Paul. So I brought the song down a whole step from E minor to D minor which I've always thought was the saddest of all keys. I decided to keep the intro harmony the same as the original song, which uses a flat six to one minor chord progression to create this epic sound. Actually, after playing this chord progression a lot, I noticed it in other epic music compositions. I wanted to start with a big sound that matches the energy of the original recording. So I started with an arpeggiated line from the Korg prologue, a swell of the Juno 60, and a chorus of vocals with an edgy sound and a big reverb. Once the verse comes in, Paul does something interesting with the melody. Instead of the flat six, he sings the natural six. Mm -hmm. 
So this one different note changes the mood, just briefly, before he returns to sing that flat six again at the end of the line. So in the Beatles version, the verse harmony sticks with this one minor and flat six chord progression, but I thought it'd be interesting to emphasize this natural six note with a different harmony. So on the lyrics, keeps a jar by the door, I change the chords to G major seven, F major seven, and E flat major seven nine. And when I added all the instruments in my studio, the verse ended up sounding like this. In the pre-chorus, the Beatles have a descending line where the upper strings play a minor triad, while the cellos descend. I decided to go in a different direction and change the chords again. Then I brought my prologue and Juno back in to play these chords and added some more bells and whistles. I also have some other ear candy, like the toms from the sequential drum tracks, twinkles from the Juno 60, and a mess of pads from the OB6 and the prologue. One thing Eleanor Rigby taught me is that a good melody can make a song memorable. And this is a song you can recognize even without any lyrics. And because the melody is so strong, it can stand on a wide variety of chords. So you can hear my cover of Eleanor Rigby on streaming platforms. Links are down in the description. And I'll have a music video that will be coming out next week. I hope you'll check it out. In the meantime, be well, and I'll see you in the next installment of Beetle Wave. See ya.